Hello there guys and welcome back to another episode of the FIFA 20 career mode with Napoli and today we're episode 27 of the career mode. So today's episode we're going to start off with a little training here and a little bit of a discussion because with the training I feel like with this team I haven't really implemented too many of the younger players from the Youth Academy. This season I didn't end up setting up the Youth Academy again um, just because I feel like with this team like Napoli being such an established team and the players that I've brought in especially as well and the way that I've sort of done it this this way around this career mode that it's going to be very hard for youth players to get a run in their team so you can see here I do have some wingers here 18 years of age 17 years of age midfielders as well I've got Elmas who I mentioned last episode uh, Laperto as well I don't really play him but he's the fourth choice centre back uh, full backs as well that I've got age 18 and 17 now, I don't really bring them into the training and train them up to get them into the team just because I feel like the squad depth is so big at the moment that there'd literally been no chance to get them into the team. And obviously, because we earn so much money and revenue from all sorts of streams in the Serie A and Champions League, uh, Copa Nacional, so, so on and so on, that I can afford to buy the players for the youth. So, for the training, as you've seen, I just mainly train the first team players. I don't really train any of the others. Um, so I just wanted to clear that up, you know, so you guys would know what's going on with the training. So, one mistake, one vital mistake I've made from last episode, going into this episode, I'm going to mention now. But before I do, if you guys enjoyed today's episode, don't forget, leave a like down below. I'd really appreciate it. So, last episode, we got three straight wins. A really, really good episode all round. Um, but you can see there, from the uh, news media, Fabian coming up. So in the episode, Fabian got injured for seven months. So obviously all gutted, this, this and that. I've after that, after recording that episode, I've quit out the game, turned my PS4 off, blah blah blah, gone out, come back. Uh, now I've gone back onto the career mode, then I've noticed next game, Torino. And I was like, hang on a minute, I did that you know before earlier in the day. And what happened as is as I've exited the career mode without saving. So one thing's a little bit worried about was Fabian's not going to get injured. Like, obviously, I can sim it, get the three wins again, hopefully, without too much effort going in and out, in and out, in and out. And I managed to do that. Torino, I simmed this whole episode again. Uh, Torino, we won. Liverpool, we won. 1 0, which is the actual result we got. Torino, I think it was a 3 1 win or a 2 1 win. I know it's somewhat similar to that. And then Genoa, I think it was a 2 1 win. But we won all the games, and I've managed to sim it again, and we've won all the games again. So that's great. So the result hasn't really affected us. I checked the Champions League standings, they're all the same. The same teams that went through that we noticed, like the Barcelona against Ajax, instead of it being a 7-2 in aggregate, I checked now and it's 7-1. So that's all the same. But the only thing that isn't the same and it annoys me the most is Fabian being out for seven months. Obviously, I'm grateful on the inside, thinking, oh yeah, Fabian isn't out. But for the realism of the career mode, he isn't going to be out for seven months, which is annoying. But one thing I did notice when I go into my notifications is in, instead of Fabian being out for seven months, we got Insigne out with a broken angle injury for seven weeks instead. Obviously, nowhere near as long as the Fabian injury, but that is what we got to deal with instead of Fabian being out. Like I say, it's, it's all my mistake. There's no other way of me going around it now. The only other way of going around it was deleting the video, recording the whole thing again, but it wouldn't feel as... Well, I'd say, yeah, realistic and real because I'd more or less be re-commentating what I've already said in them games. Obviously, unless the outcome was different. But I didn't want to play it knowing what I knew, if you knew what I mean. If you know what I mean. So, it's sort of a long story. A mistake on my behalf, but hopefully, me simulating through it again hasn't made too much of an impact on it. I've still won the three games we won and we kick on, like I say. So, anyway, moving on today's, into today's episode. We're going to have a quick look at the calendar in a minute before we go on in we can have a look at some emails here i've had quite a few loan offers here for canate as you can see here oh no sorry i've had a loan offer from barcelona i rejected that loan offer from dortmund now i'm going to reject that and also at the start of the season man city come with an offer you can see they're 30.4 million rejected that i'm going to reject all of them and um, because like i said as well last episode of, there you go costa one of our young uh, left mids there or might have been right mid um, loaned out. He is going to come become our replacement for Koulibaly. If we have a quick look here at the squad hub and go down to Koulibaly, have a quick look at his age, see how he's playing at the moment. You see there, he's 29 years of age, so 
He's one of the world's best, and it's pretty mad to think we've got one of the world's best players. And there's no doubt that he is one of the world's best, but it's just mad that in our career we've got one of the world's best uh, defenders. Like I say, he's 92 overall, playing really well for us at the moment. But I just know once he hits next season, the 30, he's going to start declining. As we've noticed with uh, Alan, yeah, that's the player I remember now, Alan. Gone down by one overall. We've gone over it last episode, but he's starting to decline. So I know Koulibaly will soon. And like I say, even if he goes down by one, he's still 91 rated. So it's not the end of the world, but I just know Canate will be his replacement. But anyway, for today's episode, we have Palmer away from home. And then we move on into April, which have a busy month there. You can see we're against Manchester City. Probably the toughest game, I would say of the lot to face in the Champions League. You could have said Liverpool the same, we end up beating them as well. So Man City should be no different realistically considering Liverpool won the Champions League last season. Uh, well, not last season, last year in real life. Um, well, this season, last, you know what I mean, get my head around it. Liverpool won the last Champions League final. Uh, but anyway, we played Palmer away from home and then we got Frost, Frosting one, Frosting own. Uh, we played them at home, I believe they are a promoted team and then we have the first leg of the quarterfinal against Manchester City. So it's going to be an interesting episode today. And you can see after that, two days after, we've got Juventus. So we've not got, again, much time in between games. It's going to be a little bit hard as well without Insigne. Again, my mistake. I apologise for not saving the game and Fabian being out for seven months because obviously that is a lot worse and a harder thing to deal with. But either way, oh, here we go. Yeah, I better, I better substitute him out of the team. But anyway... Apart from that, we're going to head on into the game against Parma. Here we go, through ball. Fabian, can he finish? And there we have it, 1-0, seven minutes in. And we have taken the lead. Fabian with the goal. It's going to be him, wasn't it? Previous episode, out for seven months. But he's not anymore. And he's come in here, made an impact straight away. Marlon picks up the ball, through ball, Fabian. And there we have it, 1-0. Marlon, 2-0. Oh, I thought I was going in after the goalkeeper got a hand to it there. I really thought it was. Won ourselves a corner though here. See if we can make the most of this. Get it on Koulibaly's head or another defender's head. And we have. It's gone over and it's probably the closest we've been to getting a goal from a corner. Oh, Palmer. Oh, Palmer almost equalising there. Moret, great save. And he's made a bad pass out. Not for the first time. There we go, Marlon. 2-0. Of course it is. He was never going to miss that. And there we have it. Two goals. Now scored against Palmer just into the second half as well. Fabian, I think that was Fabian with a great assist there over the top. And Alan, uh, sorry, Marlon there to finish it off. Not a bad little goal here. Alan through to Fabian. I can see Marlon there making the run towards the back post. Over the top and volleyed him. Palmer on the attack here. Still struggling to defend towards the back post. Headed back into play. Here we go. Lozano's got it now. Maybe we can get the back on the counter-attack ourselves. Fabian. Bergvine. I can't see anyone making a run. Marlon. Can he keep hold of it? And he, no. Defend. Oh, no. He still has. Oh, he's lost it again. And unfortunately, Palmer now on the counter-attack. Can we defend this? Still keep hold of the ball. Playing it out. Here we go. Cool barley there. Comfortable header. Looking dangerous from Palmer. Oh, Almost. Almost going in there. I've made a few subs as well. You can see it's just gone wide. Well, I say just. Probably looks a lot worse from another angle. Uh, when I thought it was going in from the angle I said. Made a few subs. Well, made all three subs, shall I say. Just to rotate the team because I knew we wouldn't have much time in between games. So, rotating players. Sorting the fitness out. Ready for the next game. So, here we go. The last chance of the game. And it is going to be a corner. Whip this one in. Zelinski here. Got, oh, I thought we've got a decent chance of a head in there. Headed out. Koulibaly. Maybe get another cross in quickly. We can get ahead on that. Oh, the goalkeeper just tips it over the bar. Bales. Oh, here we go. Another corner. Yeah, here we go. Can we get another head on this? And we can. And it goes way, way over the goal. Never going in. But there we have it. A 2-0 win to start the episode against Palmer. A really good win there. And we carry on our unbeaten streak in the Serie A. Which is, it, it, I find it hard to believe in a way. Um, just because of how we played in the start of the season. Now all of a sudden last episode and the episode before I believe. Getting back to back wins. We just picked up our, just picked up our form and just started winning. And it's just weird because. Well not weird but it's annoying because it's like. Well if we started doing that 
at the start of the season, maybe right now we could we could be challenging for the top top spot or top top two at least. Do you know what I mean? But right now we're having to grind out the results and work our way back up to get into the top four, let alone challenge for the top two. But anyway, here we're gonna go into the interview here because obviously simming the games um, ahead just to get a sort of similar um, wins to the last episode. The, the team morale has gone back down. Some some lads aren't as happy. So, do you think Farm was defeated before the match even started? I'm going to put yes. Uh, yeah, there we go. Team morale's gone up. A few players' morales have gone down from simming the games. So, hopefully, this will hopefully help get them up. Well, congratulations. You managed to defeat Palmer this time. What do you think of this match? Farmer was not prepared. I'm proud of the lads. We'll go with that. I don't know what they mean by this time. Maybe I've lost to them earlier on in the season. Um, I can't really remember. Granite down in victory today with a 2-0 score. How pleased are you with the team's performance? I'm going to go with time to focus on our next match. I don't think I'm going to go with something like, oh, we could have scored by more because I'm guessing the team around will go down by that because they'll be like, oh, well, if what we did was not good enough. But anyway, that is it for the interview. So we've got a player chat here after the game from Canate, and this has been quite a frequent thing as of recent. You can see it doesn't have a timestamp to tell you when all these messages came in. But you can see the most obvious thing is, I hope you're not going to bench me. I've been in pretty good form. Disappointed not to play. First name on a team sheet, but I feel like I should be getting more game time. And you can see here as well, again, really disappointed not to be involved in the first team. I know I'm not one of the top players. Shall I get a spell away on loan? Um, I'm going to go with... I don't really want to go with any of these, to be honest. You need play time. It's your best option. You'll come back stronger. Now, I want to play him. He is going to be playing. So what I'm thinking right now is if I play him in the next game and then for the Manchester City game, take him out, put Koulibaly in, but at least play him for the next game. Now, it's your best option. I'm not going to go with that. You'll come back stronger because I insist that he's going to go out on loan. So I'm going to go with this. You need play time. His morale's gone up. So hopefully that doesn't mean a transfer list has been put, put up against him. So hopefully now, if I play him for the next game, things shouldn't get too bad. So just before we head into the next game of the episode, uh, I've got a chat here from Felix as well uh, about not being benched. So I'm just going to go if I consider it. But you might have seen from the last clip, we got a little pop-up in the corner saying we're not on track from the Napoli board. So a quick look at this, and this is the youth development. So this sort of links in to what I was on about earlier on in the episode. So he's saying here, he wants to sign one youth player to the senior team in the same season they were scouted. Played them for five matches, either as part of the starting eleven or coming on as a sub. So that is something I probably could do. Um, but right now, we're not realistically in a comfortable position to... I, I, I want to say it's a bit of a risk bringing on a player as a sub. Um, and, you know what I mean? Let's just say we bring on one of the left-backs or right-backs as, as a sub. Um, I couldn't bring them on anyway, on anyway just because... They weren't scouted this season, but something like that, and then we lose the game. I'd feel like it's because of them, or they might start attacking down the other that side of the that side of um, the pitch, the the AI. So it's not realistically a milestone or an objective story that I can complete with Napoli. Obviously, I can, but it's not exactly a major one, a major major one. Oh, there we go. They're on the attack now. Oh my God! I thought I was going in near post then, and it's something that most likely would have happened. Here we go. They've got the corner here. How are they going to play it? Out wide. Feel oh, here we go. Oh, straight through to Moret there. I thought one of their players was going to get a touch onto that and it was going in. So there we have it, guys. Half time. Still nil-nil. Very surprised. They've had a lot of attacking chances. Just not able to put them away. They seem to be sitting back a lot, making it hard for us to, once we get in the box, find space to have a shot. You can see here, they've had two shots, two on target. We've had five shots. Only three of them being on target. Uh, we've had the majority of possession as well. Uh, one thing I'm not really feeling at the moment is Felix up front. I don't know what it is. Like, but to be fair, he's not had much of the ball. So I can't really say it's all his fault. And I'm not saying it is. Um, but I just know that when Marlon's on, games like this, he seems to pop up and get a goal. So I'm going to leave it as it is for now. But I'm thinking around about the 60th, 65th minute, if things don't change... Bring Marlon on. Hopefully, he can rescue us the three points in this game. Here we go. He's here. He's in his favourite spot. Let's go for the finesse. Oh, he had a little bit of a curl on it. Not enough to get past the keeper, though. I brought him on. I pushed Felix out wide, which 
probably isn't the best of choices to do, if I'm going to be honest. But Lozano was out low, sorry, I mean, of energy. Um, energy, what I meant about stamina. But, oh, here we go. Better defend this. If I don't just start defending this, Moret! Oh, my God. God, as soon, as soon as I go on the attack, they go on the attack. And it looks like we've lost all points in this game. It's not looking great so far. Like I say, anyway, I brought Marlon on, brought Mertens on. But here, look at that, the rebound. Always the rebound. Why Moret couldn't keep a hold of that? I'll never know. But there you go. They are 1-0 up right now, and it's not looking good. Not long left in this game. Uh, probably should have brought Marlon on at half time, but... I gave Felix the benefit of the doubt, but he didn't really seem to get it moving. I don't know what it is with Felix. Here we go, Marlon. Oh, he's tackled easily. Come on, rescue today. And he has Zielinski again coming off the bench, scoring an important goal. Not as important as I wanted it to be, but it was important because the rescue was at least a point. I was hoping it would be the goal to get us all free, but at least we continue our unbeaten run. Hopefully. It's not over yet, but it almost is. So there we have it, guys. The game is over. 1-1. Not the best of games, I'm going to be honest, like as of recent, scoring two, three goals a game. But it's all we needed, the goal in the last couple of minutes, just to rescue that one point. So Lindsay there, coming off the bench, swapped him off for Fabian. And like you see there, just rescued us an important point. And hopefully, well not hopefully, he has continued our unbeaten run. So, here we go, the interview after the game. Team Morale currently unhappy. I'm guessing that is only because of the scoreline, unsure why. Uh, what were the reasons behind the team's failure? I know the question to this was saying it's put a dent in our pursuit for the title, which I didn't think we were in, in for it anyway, if I'm going to be honest, falling this far behind this late on in the Serie A. But anyway, let's have a see. What were the reasons behind the team's failure? I'm proud of the lads, we're not far away. We'll get, we're in this together, we'll go again. We'll go with that. And at least it's pushed it up out of the unhappy zone. Um, like I say, you managed to get the equaliser in the last minute. It's rather lucky to walk away with a draw, wouldn't you agree? A draw was fully deserved. I'm going to go with that. Because it was. We played a lot better in the first half. But in the second half, just let ourselves go. And like I say, they just scored that goal off the rebound, which wasn't great at all. Most fans expected a victory today, and so did I. As Napoli received as the better team. Can you comment? I don't believe in labels such as better, worse. Yes, they were the better team. It's something to learn from. We'll go with that. And there we go. The team morale is at happy. All the way from unhappy. So just before we head into the Champions League game against Man City, I thought I'd have a quick look at the Serie A table. See how it's looking after today's games in the Serie A. So you can see Juventus still top. Only losing two games on 84 points now. And that is what I mean. Any interviews saying how we could have gone on and won the title, but I doubt in the games remaining that would even possibly win the title. So, crazy question to ask, if I'm honest. But you can see there, Juventus are still top into Milan, only behind them by a couple of points now, six points. We're still sitting in seventh. Roma and Lazio really giving us a run for our money there. Lazio quite a way ahead, nine points ahead. But Roma, I feel like if we continue the way we are, we can most likely take over Roma and Lazio and hopefully secure that top five spot. Then... Like I say, even then, say we finish in fifth, and let's say we don't win the Champions League, then I'm a little bit worried if we'll keep our job. I'm a little unsure. Um, but if we manage to win the Champions League, then I don't really mind. But it all falls down to that. But like I say, still finishing strong in the Serie A is still important, don't get me wrong. But not many games left. But anyway, let's look at, look at the standings. Who's facing who in the quarterfinals? You can see there, Real Madrid, Atletico Madrid have already played. And Real Mad Atletico Madrid, sorry, 3-0 up in the first leg. Bayern and PSG, 1-1. Barcelona face Dortmund. We face Napoli. So, some good, good teams here in the quarterfinals. And I'm going to be honest, I wouldn't like to face any. But as it stands right now, I think I'd like to face Real Madrid, considering Atletico Madrid are beating them 3-0 so far. But I'm guessing that's based off form. Um, but anyway, we're going to attend the press conference. Let's have a see what they have to ask us. So, the first question here. Seeing if we'll see more of Mertens today. I'm going to go with rotation is key. Seems to be the best answer for that sort of question. And we probably will. He'll put, he's, going to, he's on the bench. So he probably will make a, you know, come on at some point pretty much. That's what I'm trying to say. Considering Man City is similar to Napoli in terms of strength. How do you plan to handle the match? How, will you go into the next round? I'm going to go with we have one of the best teams. And which we do. 
If you look on paper, we have a really, really good team. And that's why last game when we drew, it was very frustrating. But I knew in the dying moments that that goal Zelinski scored was important. Uh, how will you approach the upcoming match? I'm going to go with not underestimate. Yeah, and there we go. The morale is still happy. Would have been nice to get it up a little bit higher. But as long as it's not content, we can't really argue. So here we have it. Here's the team we're going with for the final game of today's episode. Give a little bit of a change around, especially the front three. And wow, Bale has gone down to an 83 overall now. I didn't know that. Well, I didn't even notice. Midfield stays the same. Madison, Allen and Fabian. Left backs and right backs have been rotated out. Brought Manalas in for Canate. And I've still kept Koulibaly in. And Koulibaly's up to a 93 now. Bloody hell. Uh, Moret, Nez, uh, Moret sorry, in goal. And he's got up to an 87. Kept as it is. Was going to put Zelinski in. But I've kept him out just for now. And I'll probably bring him on at some point in the game. But that's the team. Let's go. So just before the game starts. I'm going to have a quick look at the Man City team. Because uh, that's one thing we always sort of do. When we play a team we don't play every week. In the Serie A. Uh, we're going to have a look at their team. So here we go. Man City. Still got Sane on the left. Still in on the right. Roberts up front. De Bruyne in midfield. Rodri. Edison still in goal. So not a bad looking team there. Laporte as well. Still at centre back. So it's going to be a tough game. Don't get me wrong. I hope. Just hope to God. We can score early on here. And put the game to bed quite a go. Marlon's through. Edison's going to get there. Marlon's got it through his legs though. And it's gone in. 1-0 already. Five minutes. And Marlon has just got a thing for that. Getting a goal really, really early on. And as I just mentioned, it sounded a bit uh, obvious. Get you know Start the game off really well. But with fitness levels being as low as they are. And as you can see by the midfield. I really need to get off to a good start here. Madison, simple ball through. Edison almost getting to that. He sort of hesitated as he got to it. Probably didn't want to give away a penalty. And uh, you can see there. He goes to crouch down but then stand up. Marlon getting it through. Making it 1-0. Here we go, over the top, Marlon's got it, cut it back, do a little chip in the box, get ahead on that, Edison's headed it out, a little bit worried right now, because I can imagine if De Bruyne gets this ball, whips one in the box, they're going to head it in, I can guarantee it 9 times out of 10, De Bruyne is going to put a good ball in, here we go, Marlon through again, 2-0, and this game has surely got to be done by now, it's only 20 minutes in, and it's weird to say that, only 20 minutes in, but Man City are allowing us a lot of room. And that's sort of difference when you play a team like Man City. Then you sort of play a team lower in your league like last game. They defend, they, they sort of play with a lower defending team. Whereas Man City obviously try and pressure you. play on the front foot. Which allows you a lot of extra space. And you can sort of feel that in this game. Oh, there we go. Man City on the attack now. Rodrigue managed to get onto that. Oh, thank God. Moret. I was going to have dragging him out then. Hopefully he'll pick up the ball. Pep Guardiola still in charge at Man City. De Bruyne here going for the shot. Like I said, he tried bringing Moret out and he did come out. But it's gone out for a corner here. They're going to play it short, surely. Here we go, Sterling. Cut it back there. Here we go, cut it back again. De Bruyne, they're going to cross it in or they're going to pass it around. And he's got it in. Moret, no. And on the rebound, Van der Beek's got it in. Making it 2-1. And again, we need another goal. We go Madison, little chip in. Marlon can't get the volley on. Wow, I thought he was gonna head it into his own net then. But I don't have that sort of luck in career mode. If I'm gonna be honest, there are a few rebounds here and there, but not much luck when it comes to stuff like that. But there we have it. There's half time, looking great so far. Like I say, disappointing to concede that goal just before half time as well from the corner. But when they're sort of just passing it around like that, dead fast as well. It is hard to keep up with it. But let's have a quick look at the match facts before we start the second half. Um, it's looking pretty even right now. They've had a lot more possession than us. And it is sort of feeling that way. It's just on the counter-attacks that we're making them pay. We've had three shots on target to their two. Four shots overall compared to their three. So hopefully next half it either quietens down and we just finish it off 2-1. Or if they do end up scoring one then we're going to have to pull up our socks and get the other goal. There we go, Marlon in loads of room, straight after kick-off. Cut it back in, go for the finesse. Can't get on the rebound either. Bale unable to keep control of that there. There we go, Bale's got some room. Can we get the shot away? And we can, and there we have it, 3-1. Finally got the two-goal cushion again, and that's what we needed. I've just noticed as well, um, from the start of the game, you've seen they had a strike up front called Roberts. They just brought him off. 
to bring Goetz around. Now, I'm guessing Goetz is going up front, unless they've changed it around. Sane up front, Sterling up front, I don't know. But I know they've just brought him in off the bench. But Bale there, finally restoring our two-goal cushion. And now we're back in the lead, and we can relax. We're we'll in the lead anyway, but we can relax more now. So here we have it, City free kick. Interesting to see how they take this. Would they go for the shot? And he has. Moret, easy save there, to be fair. Brought some subs on. Mertens coming on, and Zielinski as well. Just to freshen up, because I just realised as well that come up in the corner. We got Juventus two days after this. So that's going to be a really important game. Can we continue our good run against them? Here we go. Go for the shots. Unable to get it away. That was Mertens as well. Got a decent shot on him. Um, we've got Juventus as well. So I need to freshen things up. Oh, and here we go. Sane's through. Loads of room. I'm, he's gonna, it's going to cross it across. And Moret's got to that. But yeah, so I needed to think of that. Thank God it come up and reminded me, to be fair. And there we have it. City have scored one back. Mario Goetz. Uh, Making it 3-2. And look at this. I'm trying to defend here. Just taking it slow. Just taking it slow. Pass it back and just takes a shot first time. Gets it in. Flies past Moret. 3-2. The game's pretty much, well, almost over now. 80th minute. Obviously not to worry too much. We've still got a second leg. But obviously it'd be nice just to make the game pretty much put to bed in the first leg. So then the second leg, you don't have to worry too much. Go, Marlon's through. Take it slow, get the goal, and there we go. We restore it again. And that seems to be the common theme this game. Go a goal behind, score another one, make the two-goal cushion again. And Marlon there picks up his hat-trick as well, I do believe. Uh, Bale there, through ball. Oh, no, I don't, it, yeah, I think it was Bale with a through ball there. Marlon slotting it away. And like I say, guys, if you need a striker you want to pick up, I'm not too sure if he is under a left winger, but I know he can play striker. Um, I picked him up first season. Didn't really think much of him, if I'm going to be honest. Played him now and again, because obviously I had Insigne, didn't I, and Mertens. So I hardly really played him. Um, and then now, he's just, just an absolute machine. No way, they've scored another. And they make it 4-3 now. I can't believe that. I'm probably relaxing too much here. Not really focused on the defending. Sterling crossing it in. On the rebound, obviously. Second goal this episode. They've scored on the rebound. Look at that. Open goal, pretty much. He was never going to miss. Could have picked anywhere. And he picked probably the closest to the goalkeeper. Scoring, though. But surely this game is over now. It's been an absolute goal fest. And to be fair, it's nice to have the difference. Because last season we played in the Champions League. Most games were just a 1-0 win or a 2-0 win. Something on them lines. There weren't too many goals, but you can see there in this game, Marlon's picked up a hat-trick in five attempts. Um, but yeah, it's been a refreshing game. It's been a nice game. Still come away with a win. Like I say, I believe we're away from home as well. So to get the four away goals is pretty important. Marlon there, 10 match rating. But like I say, look at the match facts there. They have possession, 58%. Shots on target, the same. Just, just made them count today. But anyway, let's go into the post-match interview and round off the episode. You can see there as well, uh, Barcelona defeating Dortmund 3-1. So here we have it, the first question. Managed to win your first leg despite playing away from home. So I was right when I was saying it was away from home. I'm sure we was. Uh, are your favourites to go through? Um, I'm going to say we need to be at our best in the second leg. Yeah. Morale didn't go up too much with that and I knew it wouldn't. But we still need to be at our best because if you've seen that game there... So many times we've recovered our two-goal cushion for them to score again. And uh, like I say, City, not a team to be messed with. How satisfied are you with Mertens? I won't, I won't, I, I'm going to say he deserves all the praise just for the morale boost. But I wouldn't say he played an amazing game. I'm sure that he should have brought up Marlon. Surely that's who we're going to bring up next. Yeah, Marlon. We expect Marlon to get a hat-trick today. I'm just going to go breathtaking performance. And there we go. That puts him up to very happy. So there we have it guys, after the interview you can see the news highlight here, Marlon completes hat-trick against Man City and it's so different, like you play, we play Man City, probably top of the league in England, actually we'll have a quick look now actually, just before the episode ends, we'll have a quick look at the other league, how the Premier League is doing, because it's something I haven't really shown uh, in this career mode, obviously I'll do something at the end of the season when we look at, oh there you go, Man City top of the league, uh, Liverpool in fourth surprisingly, wow, Spurs second, Arsenal third, um, but that's something we'll do at the end of the season, have a look through all the leagues, etc. But it's weird how I'll probably play a team in the bottom three of the Serie A, score only one goal, just enough to make the draw. And then we play Man City and manage to put four past them. 
But like I say, it's, it's how the different teams play. You play a lower league team, well not a lower league, but a lower class team, shall we call it. They're going to play a bit more defensive, have a few more players back. Whereas Man City are going to play more attacking, allow more room, you know, things like that. So they're going to allow for more counter-attacking opportunities. But, like I say, all round, good episode. Not doing too bad. Marlon, have a quick look here. Because I just noticed as well in the interview, still on his original contract. He hasn't asked for anything more. Which I'm very surprised. I would have thought he would have popped up by now in the player chat. Saying he wants a new contract or something on them lines. But he hasn't. He's still here. He's still in a sporadic uh, squad role. Which means he's still on his original contract. Which mustn't be a lot of money. Uh, can we see how much that is right now on the financials? Yeah, so 38000 He's valued at 62 million right now. Contract length, three years. So I'm sure, I'm pretty much sure... Soon, he's going to want a new contract, which he warrants. Don't get me wrong. He really deserves a new contract. Uh, Four-star skill moves there. Three-star weak foot, which I wouldn't really notice with a weak foot. He is right-footed, but there's, there's a few times where I go, on, go in on the right, cut back, curl it in on the left, and he gets in nine times out of ten. But look here, 29 goals in 41 games. Doing really great for us. Ten goals in nine games in the UEFA Champions League. Doing really great for us. 8.2 match rating he's averaging right now. Like I say, if you need a striker, guys, pick him up. He's I'm sure you would have heard of him by now, but he's just another level. But, yeah, like I say. Anyway, guys, we might as well wrap it up for today's episode. That is that. If you've enjoyed today's episode, don't forget, leave a like down below. Leave a comment as well on anything that's happened. Also, leave... Some comments on who we can replace certain players with in this career mode. Like I say, Alan next season, a player we need to replace most likely. Well, not need to replace as soon as possible, but we need to get some ideas ideas in there. So, as well with Mertens, some players coming in. I'm thinking Felix, but I'm not a fan of Felix. I don't know what it is. Maybe I can't play to his best, my playing style, but maybe sell Felix on, sell Mer Mer Mertens on, or keep Mertens, have him on as a sub, reserve, what have you and bring another player in i don't know but anyway leave a comment hit the subscribe button as well join the army and i'll see you all next episode